That is Grinard Island. It's where a flock of sheep was bombed with anthrax, where eco-terrorists farmed contaminated soil to attack government officials, and where just seven years ago, a fire that was described as apocalyptic burned from one end to the other. Grenard Island, one kilometer off the Scottish coast, is what's called a sacrifice zone, an area that is considered permanently impaired, either economically, or like in the instance of Grenard Island, environmentally. The history of the 500-ish acre island isn't exactly robust. In the 1500s, it was described as a forested hideaway, perfect for thieves and brigands. By 1920, the population decreased from less than 10 to zero. And in 1942, it was officially sacrificed, in this case, environmentally. That environmental impairment is due to one thing, anthrax. Only about 25 years removed from World War I, where chemical weapons killed hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of soldiers on both sides, the British military was still actively developing and testing mass kill agents, including biological weapons. And they certainly weren't alone, as almost every industrialized country maintained an ability to develop, produce, and stockpile biological weapons well into the second half of the 20th century. Now halfway into the Second World War, with the military-industrial complex going full bore, the British government and military needed a secret place that they could test the effects of their new, highly virulent form of anthrax. Volume 14578, Porton Down Bacteriological Research, was contracted to conduct the testing, and the perfect place was found in Grenard Island. Upon arrival to the island, precautions were put in place to ensure no humans remained, and about 60 sheep were deposited in a secluded section, tethered together so they could not roam away. Despite the fact that sheep generally meet an unlucky end, these particular sheep would die particularly poorly. That is because this small flock was situated nearby a pole with small explosive charges that would disperse and cloud the area with anthrax spores. Those explosions were necessary because the entire point of the research conducted was to determine whether anthrax spores could survive an explosion and continue to be effective as a biological agent. Rather than just opening canisters filled with anthrax and letting the wind carry it on its way, the British were set to find out whether the bioagents could be delivered by conventional explosives, such as artillery and bombs, which would essentially blast the spores outward. The conclusion was that the spores could survive, and the visual proof was that most of the sheep would be dead within days, having been sacrificed for the sake of military science. Their corpses were evaluated and eventually burned. Oddly though, none of the Grenard Island's rabbits died and were almost entirely unaffected. The test determined that in the event Germany attacked with biological weapons, the British would be ready to retaliate with bombs capable of contaminating entire cities for decades. The local population had no idea this was happening. They of course suspected something, seeing small explosions and clouds going off at ground level on the island. And then local animals, sheep, horses, cattle, and even dogs began to die in the area, supposedly after a dead sheep washed ashore from the island. Government officials were on hand and quick to pay off any complaints that surfaced in order to quell any investigation. Even 20 years after the tests, the local population had no idea exactly what happened, as seen in this BBC footage. I've come a long way to visit that island lying out there in its lonely sea loch. Not to land on it, mind you, no fear, you wouldn't catch me setting foot on it. Nobody hereabouts is over anxious to take me out for a closer look. Hereabouts they call it the island of death, the mystery island, and for good reason. The war had been going on for three years when suddenly a team of scientific boffins from the war office took over the island and started experiments so secret that even today, 20 years later, very few people know just what went on over there. What were these scientists up to on the island, do you think? I couldn't very well tell you what they were up to. You must make a guess at it, though. Well, we were making a guess at it that they were working on some germ warfare or something like that. Uh -huh. And what made you think that? Well, we came to the conclusion that it was something from the island that uh, did away with all the stock that was killed along here, that died, without any quibble. 
they paid compensation at the rate at which the vets valued the beasts which died. Well, uh, I used to watch the, the, the smoke coming down on the top of them. What do you mean by smoke? Was it a cloud of... of... A cloud rolling above the earth, uh -huh. coming towards these animals. Where, where were the animals? They were staked over there. Oh, I see. They were tied up in yes, a line, were they? in a line. And, and then this cloud rolled down. Yes. Right? Now, it, do you think it was poison gas they were using? Well, uh, I think it was all kinds of poison gas. I think you're holding out in me a bit, you know. All we've got to go on is the guesswork of 20 years, and it doesn't all tally. If it was germs the boffins were using, why should animals die on the instant? If it was poison gas, why should that island be contaminated still 20 years later? And in this atom bomb age, when the thought of mass murder no longer shocks as it should, why all this secrecy still? On top of that, the island was privately owned. At the end of the war, the owners requested that the land be transferred back to them, which the British government immediately declined to do citing that it was unfit for habitation by man or beast. The government would then go on to take control of the island and inform the prior owners that they could repurchase it for 500 pounds once it was deemed safe. The island was then quarantined for an indefinite amount of time. Not much happened in the preceding years. A few signs were put up telling people not to land their boats or wander on the island. The tests conducted on the island remained a secret, though pretty much everyone had an idea of what had happened. It wasn't until 1981 that Grenard Island made news again, this time due to an event known as Operation Dark Harvest. 300 pounds of contaminated soil had been removed from the island by members of the Scottish Citizen Army and was being used as leverage to force the government to decontaminate the island. Anthrax spiked soil was left at a military research facility and other soil was left at the Conservative Party annual conference, though that soil wasn't toxic, but was similar to the Grenard Island soil that was. Although there doesn't seem to be any specific records indicating whether the eco-terrorists were actually successful in their convincing of getting the island uncontaminated, in 1986 work began to do just that. A layer of topsoil was removed and then formaldehyde solution blended with seawater was sprayed over the entirety of the island. Those unaffected rabbits may have finally been affected. After a short period of time, a small flock of sheep was introduced to the island, this time untethered, and reportedly lived a much different life of their predecessors, happily grazing and living normal sheep lives. Four years later, in 1990, the island was deemed safe, being officially visited by a junior defense minister to prove it. And with that designation, after 48 years of contamination and quarantine, the government made good on their word and sold it back to the original owners for 500 pounds. It is now privately owned, still off limits in that sense, but safe for man and beast once again. That is, until it caught fire in 2017. The whole island burned in its entirety. This obviously raised concerns by locals that the smoke could potentially carry anthrax to the mainland, but with its decontamination and with how those spores survived, this was basically an impossibility. Although a large contingent of nesting birds didn't survive the fire, and probably not any other animals, there was no threat of an airborne toxic event. It survives as you see it behind me, reintroduced to the world, having been healed from being a test center for death. Check out another video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get here. And as always, until next time, get lost.